Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm doing a movie review this week, but before I get to that, my last review was Top Gun Maverick, the breathtaking, soaring, and awesome quintessential sequel to the original 1986 classic with Tom Cruise reprising his role as Pete Mitchell, aka Maverick, who's in for the need for speed once again. You know, hopping on his mighty wings. And also teaching his students how to soar into new heights on the F-18s, you know, of dogfighting. <laughs> yeah, they jet aviation, of course. Yeah, because now he's he's working as a substitute um, instructor for Top Gun because they're getting ready for their dangerous mission, was to go after these um, these Russian bad guys. We're also going to attack them too, you know, launching all these missiles at them, targeting the, the enemy, which kind of led to the final battle too. Um, I know I mentioned this in my review that was very long, but I just want to fix it right away. Um, but there was a part, of course, where Maverick was outsmarting them, so it's really cool, until he got shot down and Rooster would later find him hoping that he didn't get killed because it's almost going to sound a little similar to what Maverick felt before with his best friend Goose and he was hoping that he was going to protect him so hoping that he won't have the same mistake twice but what do you know it because that scene alone was was incredible because you know they they got crashed down for sure Rooster was about to save him and the next thing you know they end up being trapped where a bunch of bad guys were guarding around and the next thing you know they stole the F-14 Tomcats that's in the garage and, and they're ready to, to launch off even though yes the F-14 Tomcat is indeed more practical compared to the F-18 which is yes that one is more digital <laughs> so there's a difference folks and I know they're trying to escape from these two bad guys until Hayman finally came to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, and, and Hayman is pretty much like Maverick. I mean, he has that same cocky attitude, but that's always the case. <laughs> but oh no, it, it's just an excellent movie. It's fun, it's exciting, and even in this generation, I'm just glad to see this movie finally got the praise it deserves. I mean, I know the first movie got mixed reviews when it came out, but boy, even that film deserves more and even better than, than they expected. But I'm just happy that, that now we finally got a sequel that's even better. And it's not just a cash-in. So, so Tom Cruise knows what he's doing. He really is. And I'm happy. I'm very proud of him, too. I mean, even at the ripe at, of 60, I mean, he can still do everything. Because I can't wait for his uh, next adventure for Mission Impossible. Because <laughs> that will be his next movie coming up later this year. Yeah, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. And I hope I get to buy some more movies uh, on 4K. Especially movies with Tom Cruise, of course. Even if I end up buying a bad movie. Like, let's say, War of the Worlds. But that's okay. I'll I'll take my chances, but there's also a lot of great movies he's done. I mean, I have gotten some films on DVD and, and Blu-ray, too. Keep that in mind. But sometimes I like to upgrade them, too, you know, just for a better picture and sound. You know, like, especially if you got the Atmos track or just a DTS or Adobe Digital, whatever. But then you got a better picture quality of HDRs and... Adobe Vision or whatever you choose, yeah. So you get to see the brightness or sometimes the darkness or the colors, you know, look more muted and even and vivid and ever. So yeah. Hopefully it's not DNR and edge enhancement, that sort of thing. Well, anyway, um, I'm just happy I reviewed the film. I know the review was long, but I wanted to get into details. I just want to have fun. So that's the whole point of it. I just don't want it to be too short, you know, or too vague and all that. Well, now that we're off the subject here, <laughs> but I just can't help it. Well, Q 
Cupid's Day. It's a special day just two days before Valentine's Day where a person would send out some roses to a special someone that they all know, love, and care. Um, sometimes they'll send out some secret admirer letters to that particular person only to find out for sure who that person was. Which is quite different from Valentine's Day because of course that day is more special and people are more familiar with that rather than Cupid's Day, but you get the idea. Which I know that they sent out some letters, candy hearts, lollipops, heart-shaped boxes with chocolates inside. Um, especially when they sent out to, um, to a special person they all know and love, or even when someone is already married. Sometimes they even have this as a wedding ceremony you know, if someone's going to get married on that same day, which that means they'll have a wedding anniversary for sure, they'll be able to take them out on, for this one special couple to go have some dinner or maybe go out on a party or just see a movie. It could be a romantic movie of any kind. And just have the best night of their lives. That's truly romantic. And... <laughs> Very um, compassion, yeah, tender, loving care for sure. <laughs> yep, because love is in the air. But what will happen if you're living on the same day over and over and over again? <laughs> well, yes, it's a similar plot device that you've seen in Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Yeah, the comedy that's now going to be celebrating its 30th anniversary. And what a coincidence, because that film came out on Cupid Day. <laughs> yeah, February 12, 1993. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it also has love, too, in, in the movie. But, but it's a hilarious comedy. You just can't go wrong with it. But this time, it's a teen drama that came out on March 3rd. 2017 about the same weekend as Logan so what do you know we're really into something more serious but I went to see Logan that year so I, I didn't get a chance to see those films until maybe later at this point although I really don't care about the shack because that one was mm, not worth your time but anyway it's the movie called before I Fall, with Zoe Dutch, Leah Thompson's daughter. You may remember her from several movies that she's been in, especially Zombieland 2, Double Tap. Yeah, because, of course, Bill Murray was in that movie. Well, you know the same familiar device, only this time you get a teen girl named Samantha Kingston. It just hangs around with her best friends who are queen bees and somehow one of them ends up making fun of an outcast girl especially on Cupid's Day when they went to a, a special party that they were invited by this one shy but also a very creative uh, young boy that at this rate He's beginning to he's beginning to fall in love with this girl until all of a sudden it ends in a tragic car accident and then somehow she ends up waking up on the same day like it's on repeat yeah so it's just like Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise which is a sci-fi uh, action adventure and of course Bill Murray with Groundhog Day you know, which is a comedy, of course. And I know there was another movie like this, too, called uh, Happy Death Day, which was a horror comedy. We all know the story about how one person who's a jerk can finally change for the better, so that way they'll finally you know, have, have it tomorrow, if that ever happens. Well, this one's going to be more tragic for sure. Because this is based on the, on the best-selling novel by Lauren Oliver, 
this is indeed one of those movies that it could be a little predictable, but chances are it could be really average. And when it comes to these teen flicks of this generation, you know exactly how this is going to turn out. Because nowadays, it just keeps getting worse. But sometimes they'll get better, because I, I know there have been some teen flicks that were better. Even dramas, like let's say uh, The Fall in Our Stars, and even the um, Paper Towns, for that matter. Those films work because they really have a, a very unique story to tell and also because it's a character study to focus on one another but you know as usual when it comes to these films especially for this generation of course everyone's gonna be shoving their cell phones going on social media you know sending out some texting and all that crap and then also some poor performances that we get from these girls I mean like you really don't care for them the same goes with the guys too you know, like you don't really care because they're, they're full of crap and also terrible music that they choose because let's face it we haven't had great pop music in years but sometimes there might be some good ones to follow but that just depends on it I mean yes I'm getting old I'm I'm almost hitting 38 now almost pushing 40 but I could definitely see what everybody felt when they were teens <laughs> because we we had some great music too in the past but maybe that's their choices so now we know <laughs> okay but this one is rather average I mean it's it's something quite special and I know Zoe Dutch is a a marvelous actress you know very young at heart she almost resembles to Ellen Page a little bit yeah now known as Elliot Page because she's a he I mean, yeah she's a lesbian but she's also well might as well be gay but now she's she just changed her gender to a he well but she's still or he is still a great actor nevertheless but anyway um, she would do the same so I was very curious to check this out too um, I got this at Big Lots for only five bucks it was definitely worth a deal and this blu-ray uh, which came out uh, that the same year that the movie came out yeah released by Universal since the film was released by open road films you know they had released several of these independent movies uh, there's no features on this release whatsoever. Yeah, it's bare bones, um, but it does come with the DVD and digital codes. So I already used it already, and yeah, and it does come with another like you get a free movie if you sign up to Universal and Rewards online, and there's also you know. Three points at Regal. <laughs> yeah, that's the feeder I go to, yeah, which is United Artists from where I am. So, so you get rewards too. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like too uh, the DVD and Blu ray. Yeah, the same cover arts as you often see on all these Universal releases. So, <laughs> there's no artwork on any of them. So you get the idea. So let's begin. It stars Zoe Dutch, Halston Sage, uh, also from the movie Paper Towns, <laughs> uh, Logan Miller from a movie called Take Me to the River. Um, he, in fact, he was also um, the voice of Nova also known as Sam Alexander in Ultimate Spider-Man and he was in a movie called Love, Simon and A Dog's Purpose too. Uh, Colin uh, Lawley, um, Elena Camporas, Diego uh, Bonetta, Jennifer Beals, yes Jennifer Beals from Flashdance as well as uh, Vampire's Kiss, you know, Nicolas Cage, you know that comedy 
And she was also in the movie The Book of Eli with uh, Denzel Washington and Mila Kunis, along with Gary Oldman. Yeah, that actress. Still looking great. Uh, Sifia Rue, Medallion Ramai, Liv Hilson, Nicholas Leah, Erica Tremblay, yes, the sister of Jacob, yeah, the actor from the movie Womb. And I know he was in the movie The Book of Henry and Wonder and many others. Uh, Clara Corlett and Rowan Curtis, based on a novel of the same title by Lauren Oliver. It's written by Maria Majanti and Gina Prince Bifewood, and it's directed by Rye Russell Young. The movie begins set on February 12th, Cupid's Day, that's a Friday, just two days before Valentine's Day, that's a Sunday. Well, at least that's what it seems on this one big Love is in the Air weekend. On the brinks of poignancy, we meet a teenage girl named Samantha Kingston, played by Zoe Dutch, who begins to have her feelings in her narration. What if there will be a tomorrow? What if that day is going to be normal like any other day? Whatever it's good, bad, or indifferent. What if people are going to remember this day forward for forgive and forgiveness and everything going around between their friends and family, relatives, you name it. Well, that's where she's about to have that feeling when she wakes up at 6.39 a.m. on her iPhone, sets up on her alarm clock to the tune of Dangerous, and she receives a text message from her boyfriend, Rob, played by Keon Lawley. Yeah, which is a Cupid's Day message. Yeah, she woke up while well, she has a torn uh, vest on her t-shirt. But she does have a very exquisite room of hers filled with photographs on the left wall of her friends that she'll remember by. And she's just getting ready to head off at school. She does have um, a lovely and caring family of the Kingstons. We meet her mother, Mrs. Kingston, not given her fur, full name, her fur, first name for that matter, played by Jennifer Beals, joining in with her father, Dan, played by Nicholas Leah, and her younger sister, Izzy, played by Erica Tremblay. So they live in this gorgeous home, very futuristic. You know, you can see a lot of um, glass railings um, on the ledge when she walks by. And you can definitely see how incredible it looks. So she's about to be picked up by her Queen Bee friends. Uh, the leader of the group is Lindsay, played by Halston Sage, joining in with Two, two of her friends, Ali, played by Cynthia Wu, and Elodie, played by Medallion Rahimi, which at this point on, it's, it's just her typical teenage girls situations, too, like they often do, where, where Lindsay just uh, picks up Sam at her SUV, also picks up Ali <laughs> just um, with her, her drink, Mocha, I believe. Ella D, who eventually tries to get in, but flashes her boobs, at this rate, her red lace bra, right in front of them. And then just gave uh, Sam a condom, so that way she'll be able to lose her virginity to her boyfriend, Rob, on this one special night. Because they're actually going to be heading out to a party. Um, so while at high school, during their class lecture on Sisyphus, which happens to be uh, a Greek mythology of uh, Sisyphus, who is the founder of the king of Aphara, which King Hades had to punish him for cheating death twice in a row, so he has to force himself to roll in an immersed boulder up on a hill only to roll back down again.
Yeah, that's for sure. All the students decided to bring out some roses to all the classmates because it is a special day. So they had to receive each and every rose. With Sam getting one from Rob and another boy who happens to be a former grade school student and best friend who had a crush on her for years named Kent McFroller who's played by Logan Miller. So Ken invites her to the party at his house, but she was feeling very enthusiastic about it. Well, that would be the case too, because during lunch, um, we meet this outside, we meet this outcast girl named Juliet Sykes, who's played by Elena Kemporis, who just came by, you know, just to have her lunch all alone. And then Sam's friends just keep making fun of her, calling her names, teasing her, and what's worse, call her a psycho. Yeah. So they're pretty much the mean girls right here. It only gets worse because uh, by the time they were at the party, you know, everyone was just having a great time for sure. Till suddenly Juliet showed up. Um, Sam just wasn't so sure if if she was going to be able to make love with Rob or Kent because this is where she's getting completely confused. Especially when Rob accidentally spilled um, spilled some alcohol on, on her. Yeah, and he's already drunk and was ready to fall in love. Well, anyway, Juliet showed up and that's where she starts to berate all of Sam's friends right in front of everyone and that's where they had a huge fight and Lindsay eventually you know calls her out tell him to go back to the ward psycho all these insults and all of that just after Juliet calls them a bitch well just to continue with the night, um, and they're just ready to go back home at midnight, or at this rate, 12.39 a.m., that's when they got into a tragic car accident. Yeah, the SUV flips over. It's like karma just hits the fan as we know it. Because we also learned that Juliet was being so humiliated that she ran away and was ready to commit suicide. <sighs> well, we first thought that this was a nightmare because Sam just woke up in her room on Cupid Day again and that's where everything seems to happen repeatedly. Like all the same similar events occurred here and there and it just and I and that's where Sam tries to figure it out for all these variations of hers that maybe she might do somewhat of a better change in her life maybe try to fix some of the mistakes that happened before so this kind of leads to a memory it's kind of like in in the movie uh, run Lola run because Lola tries to think to herself too that probably what happened the first time around was was a dream so maybe she'll be able to fix these mistakes it's sort of like you know going back to the old video and you begin to see what happens and then you begin to learn about all that so that way you won't screw up also like a video game too anyway so anyway she realized that she is in a time loop she's waking up over and over she tries to avoid the crash by sending out her friends on a sleepover instead of going to the party. That didn't seem to work out. But they have been getting text messages about you know, Lindsay committing suicide. And they're all texting around with the breaking news, the Amber Alerts going around. So that was like a horrible one. Then she woke up in her room again. And now she tends... To ha she tends 
that she just couldn't take it anymore, that she decided to go for this bad girl look, thinking that, you know, this is exactly what she's being traumatized with. That, um, yeah, she started to, you know, put on some, you know, black eye makeup and mascara and all that, giving a whole new look of her, berates uh, her family, you know, giving that tough girl attitude, and also got kicked out from her friends, um, and she decided to walk all alone to school because of this big argument that they had. And that's where she's trying to avoid all this stuff. She's about to fall in love with Rob. Uh, try to avoid Kent. And also try to make sure what happens next. Which is going to be the same thing over and over. Um, because that's when she begins to find out about Juliet. Anyway... At that rate, she woke up again, and this time she's about to take a break. Where this time, maybe this will help find her answers. Where she decided to spend time with her sister, all alone. You know, they're just about to take her out, you know, just have fun, you know, talking about their problems, especially in the past, to make things through, and then we'd be begin to learn about her poignancy, about if, if she's ever a great girl or not. She also spent time with her mom, her father, and indeed her sister. They went to go out to eat pizza, you know, just explaining to themselves. Or then there are times when, well, there was also another day too, or what seems to be, because it's the same, where she decided that she wanted to stay home, um, because she wasn't feeling very well at first, but then her mom decided to pick her up or, or take her straight to school, see if things will get better. Well, but that was earlier on. Anyway, at that point on, she decided to spend time with Kent. They, they began to go inside the room and just discover what Kent's been doing. You know, because we learned that he is an artist too, and you know, he loves to, he likes to, you know, draw or do some paintings and all that stuff. And also try to get to know uh, Sam better too, and hopefully fall in love. And then she's just trying to save uh, Juliet from humiliation, but because that's where she spots her. She was running away all the way straight into the neck of the woods, and then she exposed. Then Sam was trying to explain to her about what just happened in the past and maybe we can fix this problem. And that way, you know, you'll become a better person again. But it was too late. Because at that point on, she did get run over by a truck right in front of her. And now, that's where she begins to go back and fix this problem. And that's where it gets really difficult, too, because... That's where she's starting to feel deeply confused and everything going around. Like maybe none of this should have never happened. Maybe for sure that if this can happen, maybe she'll, she'll finally break this time looping spell that she's been going through. And hopefully, maybe there will be a tomorrow. Well, that's a case for, for her to decide. And that's exactly what the movie's about. Um, trying to have the courage, the, the forgiveness from all the mistakes they have and everything that's been going on. I mean, we also learn about her best friend, uh, Lindsay, that her parents were divorced a long time ago. And because she was once friends with Juliet, you know, they talk about what was going on in their lives, they're trying to forgive for what what's going through, but then they were in a turmoil, they were in a big fight, you know, she she just couldn't stand Juliet anymore after what Juliet did to her, and like Juliet was trying to help her out, but it didn't work, and that's why, you know, she didn't get along with her, she wanted to break up with 
her, so on. And that's why it led to that. It's crazy, I know. Or the fact that Sam was trying to try to make some connections with either Rob or Kent, and who knows how that's going to turn out. Or, or maybe she should have made her right decisions for sure, or, or even try to spend more time with the family. That's that sort of thing. Everything that went around with her. Yeah. Now, of course, this is a very special story. I know there could be some changes the way the movie was going. The ending was um, was pretty rushed. I'll say this. It wasn't a perfect ending. But then again, I, I can live with a much deeper unhappy ending if, if I could and but usually when it comes to stories like this you know they they definitely could solve the problem they can fix everything things will be complete maybe this will be maybe for the better I mean Darnie Darko was also like that too like you know we begin to find out that he's in a time warp and he, he begins to fix everything that's going around in this world because they're already getting into this this chaotic uh, end of the world um, situation, so they want to make sure you know they'll find a better life for each other. So he, so yeah, Azari Darko was a saint, and at this rate, Samantha Kingston may be a saint for her. Maybe trying to help everything get more clear before before the before fate somehow appears. So that's a very sp special story here on this plot device. Anyway, as for the performances, yes, I would say Zoe Dutch uh, gives a great performance as Samantha, and that's and it really shows that she can act and she really cares for one another, no matter how dangerous it could be. But she really nailed it. And she's the reason to see this movie. Um, and Halton Sage is also great, too. I mean, if you may remember her from Paper Towns, I know you're going to remember her for sure, because they have done some great work in their careers. And that goes the same with Logan Miller and the rest of the cast. And it was really nice to see Jennifer Beals again you know, after all these years. But she's, she's done, like, different roles here and there. But... Um, there are times where I do wish they had picked some better music. I know. You know me. I'm, I'm that old. And I think there are times when I think some of the story needs to be explained more. Like, sometimes I wish Sam had went back and tried to, to focus on the actual lecture just so she'll be able to understand. And then maybe she would have also focused on other things going around, too. Maybe the film could have been a little bit longer for the story to run. But either way, um, it is very special. But it, it's pretty average. I mean, it has its flaws here and there that could have been approved, could have been fixed. But I guess for what it is, it's a decent one. Um, I even want, found out that Brian Robbins is one of the producers of this movie. And, you know, Brian Robbins, who gave us all that, Keen and Kill, The Amanda Show. He was a cast member of Head of the Class. And, yes, he went on to do some really bad films with uh, Eddie Murphy, such as Norbit, A Thousand Words, and even uh, Meet Dave come to mind. Yeah, those terrible films. But... Of course, my favorite of his will always be Good Burger, and I always enjoy the drama uh, Varsity Blues, yeah, which also has comedy, uh, comedy elements, and but it's a sports drama too. And there's also The Perfect Score, yeah, that comedy. Um, it has some beautiful cinematography by uh, Michael Fominari. I figured this was set in Canada because you can see some wonderful trees and all the woods to the the cliffs, the, the river, and some gorgeous shots here and there. There are some little bit of editing that had to be tight 
but it follows through and it gives it a bit of a um, a teal almost a teal uh, color grading filter that they put into it just to make it more dark and dramatic this way so that's pretty much how they shot it and it just gives you that feel and I'll say this folks even as an adult like I am you can watch a film like this to learn and understand one another. I know uh, they were going to try to release this um, a long time ago. Uh, they were going to Fox 2000 Pictures, uh, which is of course the division of 20th Century Fox, now owned by Disney, um, got the rights to the film, but unfortunately it didn't work out, so they gave it to Open World Films instead. With Brian Robbins and Matthew Kaplan, who of course uh, have produced mostly young adult films here and there under his company uh, awesome awesomeness films um, he was also joined in with ace entertainment yeah that sort of thing so they brought in some new hope of this uh, very compelling story here yeah. so if they added a lot of um, more to the story and everything going around then I think it'll be a great film but for what it is um, it's a good film on the level of the plot device of time looping and it's always interesting you know to go back in time to fix all the mistakes we made so we can change the past and go for a more alternate universe so maybe things will get better this time around that's the key of these stories so anyway I give the movie before I fall three and a half stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later Bye.